Greetings everyone, welcome aboard. Joseph James here, SchoolTrade.com. It's June 16th, 2010. Happy Wacky Wednesday to you guys here. Here's our live trading recap. Now before we took a look at the trades we took today, had another great day in the live trade room. Challenging day, but you know what though? We knew that was going to come today. I want to remind you guys about our blog. Now below the video right now, there's a link to our blog. Guys, if you haven't, if you haven't been to our blog yet, you're really missing out. Now there's three important things you want to be aware of. In the upper left-hand corner of the blog page, you'll see a link to follow our blog. Guys, you want to go up to the upper left-hand corner, click on Follow, and that way you follow our blog. You get all the new updates. Every time we post a new trade call, every time a new video goes up, every time a new webinar is recorded and posted, you'll be aware of it. The second thing, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a search box. Use that search box. Search for terms like moving averages, right? trend lines, market profile, tape reading, uh, discipline cycle, right? all of those key terms. If you want to know more about the two-step pattern or how we use the dollar index futures, use the search box. And then the third thing is in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see lists, of course, our review page, read our feedback, the notes we take every day in the trade room under trade room notes, Right, and don't forget we record all of our webinars and we post our webinars on the tutorials or live webinars section. You can also see a link for our YouTube page. It's all there on the blog, guys. So the link is right below the video. Guys, make sure you guys go to the blog and don't forget to follow the blog that we get all the new information. Let's keep moving. Let's see, three, six, seven total trades today, guys. We started the day off with a loss. Always a little bit shaky, right? When your first trade of the morning was a loss especially this first trade. This is an easy money trade, too. We'll take a look at that in a second for you guys. As you can see, those six total trades, we started off looking pretty bad. Okay, We went into a couple nice big winning trades, and then the market kind of went flat here after 10 o'clock. Again, today was Wacky Wednesday. We knew what to expect. We'll talk more about that in a second. Well, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this, though. I'm pretty, I'm pretty content with 60 ticks or so uh, out of the market today. So 605, that brings to 2100 for the week right now. We got OPEX Friday coming up, 10,000 for the month, and of course, just shy of 62,000 for the year so far, guys. Six months in, $62,000. That's an average of $10,000 per month on four contracts, guys. That's the goal here. Let's keep moving. What's the most important thing that happened today? Well, today was Wacky Wednesday. Wacky Wednesday is, is characterized by being very unpredictable. There's lots of unexpected or unpredictable volume at different times of the day as traders are preparing right, to shuffle things around in preparation for OPEX on Friday. Okay, What it results in is, is you get mixed signals. Okay, do I get long here right now? Do I flatten right now? These are some of the questions we ask ourselves when we're trading on Wacky Wednesday. You know, we saw a great example in our first trade of the day today. We had a two-step pattern. We saw lots of sellers jump in the market, momentum pointing down. Under normal conditions, this would have been an easy green light for a short trade. Well, I took the short trade, but as it appears, right, those big sellers were an example of that unexpected volume that kind of got me into a trade and as you can as you can tell right the loss of it means it quickly reversed so be careful pay attention to your rules and and don't be afraid on days like today to look for just a little bit more confirmation we talked about how we're using the uh, for our scalps using momentum on a four range and confirming it with momentum on a 13 range right that's additional confirmation or maybe use a 30 minute chart and you only trade with the trend on a 30 minute on your 13 range. Okay, so if the trend is up, you'll only take long trades, right? So these are things you can extra filters you can apply on days like today. If you guys have any questions about that, guys, definitely feel free, email me, Skype me, come in tomorrow morning, ask me to go over more examples of that little bit more of confirmation you guys can use. So we had World Cup soccer or football, of course, continues to steal our attention from quadruple witching this week. And guys, this week, right, quadruple witching. March, June, September, December, OPEX week during those end of the quarter weeks, guys, always going to be challenging. So we knew that ahead of time. Let's start with the dollar first. As you guys know, we always begin with that dollar index, and here we go. Now, once again, we open the dollar up. Now, if you just looked at the fast time frame, you wouldn't have seen this very well. This is my slower time frame, and you can see my slower time frame here. We have this trend line here that continues to hold. Right now, this is a major trend line here that continues to hold here. We've bounced a couple times off levels of support, 
And for the most part, we have a sideways range here going on. Even though it does look a little bit to the downside, it is a sideways range. If you expand this thing to a, the big picture, I can't because of the size of the monitor here. But if you squish it all together, you'll see a sideways range in the dollar. So we knew right away today, nothing had really changed since earlier on this week. I'm going to zoom in real quick though for you guys through the dollar. Now here's an example of that same market, but now in a very fast time frame. Now what do you see here? I see two things that stare out at me here. The first thing is, I'm at the open. Okay, we're at the open of the day on the dollar. The second thing is, is look at the flat trigger line. Okay, so two things to be concerned about. Now we always start with our slower time frame first, and then we'll zoom in on the fast time frame, and then begin to look for patterns. When I zoom in now though, on the dollar, this is that red flag, right? This is the danger, right? This is the alert, alert, alert. We've got two strikes against us. We're at the open, right? We call that our zero line, and we've got a flat trigger line. Okay, now for more information on that, come in tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about how we use that trigger line and why the open is, is, is going to be a pretty tough area to trade around. But first things first, if I see the dollar at the open and flat, I'm very concerned very, right off the bat. Now, gold was another example here. We saw almost all the markets at their open. Here's a slower time frame of gold, and here you can see that wedge pattern, right? This is a good example of the wedge pattern we see. We take our trend lines from the downside, from the upside, and you can see over the past couple of days here, gold has just been kind of, right, just kind of trickling here sideways in the middle of that, of that range. Okay, we call it a wedge pattern, and a wedge pattern will continue to put pressure on price until it explodes, either up or down. Unfortunately, though, most of the time we have to wait through this. Okay, so we're going to, have to wait until this gold either breaks above the trend line or breaks below the trend line to really begin to see this market moving here. Okay, now let's fast forward, zoom in a little bit here on the fast time frame, and this looks probably pretty similar to the dollar. Right, two strikes against me. I've got at the open, all right, and I see a flat trigger line. Okay, so the dollar and the gold today, great examples of how you can look for a slower time frame first, then zoom in. If we're around the open of the day, guys, and again, I use a 12 a.m. start, 12 a.m. stop for my chart types. All right, guys? And then lastly here, look at crude. Right, now we did some good damage on crude today. Made some money on crude, made some money on gold, made some money on the euro. Now, this is a very slow time frame, and what I've done here is, is I've added my trigger zone tool, right to the lows and to the highs and then inside of that it defines our trigger zone okay so our trigger zone here you can see right now on crude we are right in the middle of our trigger zone now what do we also know about our trigger zone our trigger zone also is a transitional zone which means if we go below the zone the sellers are in control. If we go above the zone, that means the buyers are now back in control. And as you can see right now, we are inside the zone. So we are in a transitional area on crude oil. Now, what would you how how should we think about this? Right? I look at I look at my dollar. My dollar's flat. It's quadruple witching this week. It's OPEX. We've got World Cup soccer. Right? We've got a lot of things going on that are stealing the attention from these markets. Right, that's what's resulting in this lower volume we're seeing this week. Okay, for good reason. It's a challenging time of the, time of the month. So when I look at crude like this, this really solidifies my concern that I need to be careful today. Right, slow time frame. We zoom out, see the big picture. We use our trigger zone tool to define where that trigger zone is, and there we are on crude, right in the middle of that trigger zone. All right, guys, this is real simple stuff. I'm looking ahead of time to see what do the fundamentals of the market tell me right now. So crude oil tells me be very careful today. Okay, knowing that we had quadruple witching today, we should be very careful today. Right? The dollar sideways, the dollar at its open, be very careful today. Okay, so what I did this morning was I went one by one through each market, looking at each market, slow time frame, fast time frame, making sure that everything was accounted for, and then we could make educated decisions based upon the market we saw. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of the trades we took today here.